The day was January 8th In 1886 Yes it was more For that was the day That my prophet was born Islam, Islam, Islam Islam Thank you for joining us here at WHPR TV 33 Highland Park, Michigan it's us again. We back, Moors. We Islam, back. Islam. Islam. We hope and pray that all had a great Moors New Year. I mean, a great Savior's Day. And are going to have a great Moors New Year. Islam. We are, we are Brother Sayyidin Muhammad Bey of the Moors Science Temple of America, 1928, under the Supreme Grand Sheikh, Dr. Ross Sadiel. This To my right is Brother... Introduce Bakwe yourself. Cream L. And to, my, and to my left is Stuart Nimam A. Sarsadiu. Islam. And we're bringing you to a Moore's Perspective. Islam in America, a Moore's Perspective TV show. And today, we're going to speak about our holy and divine prophet, seeing that this month is very, this week and this month is very special to us. We hold it very dear and near to us. Islam. It's our Savior's Islam. Day, which was January the 8th. And what we want to do today is educate you the truthfulness of our holy and divine prophet through one of our books that our Supreme Grand Sheik, Dr. Ross Sadiel, published about our prophet. And it's called, I Am Your Prophet. And we're going to be coming out of that book explaining a lot of things and information about our prophet to you today. But first, we're going to get right into it. And we're going to refer your minds to the Holy Bible because we need you to understand that Allah so loved you that he gave you a prophet more. That he gave the Asiatics of North America a prophet. So let's go in the Bible and let's read John. North, South, and Central America. Islam. Islam. We want to start at John 16, 7, which states, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Islam? Islam. Islam. You know, so that is indicating that there's going to be someone after Prophet Jesus. And then in Revelations 3, 12, it states, Him that overcometh, Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Islam, uh, brother, hey, Sarsadiel, what's that new name, more? Islam. Noble Jur Ali, the prophet. Islam, Islam, Islam. Now we want to take you to the Holy Quran of Mecca Islam. and show and prove to you in there that our prophet was prophesied about. And if you turn to Surah 10, 47, it says, To every people was a messenger, uh, was sent a messenger. When the messenger comes before them, the matter will be judged between them with justice and they will not be wronged. Islam. Islam. I want to take your mind's eye to 16, Surah 16, Ayat 36, which states, For we assuredly sent amongst every people a messenger. Do we not believe that God, that Allah Almighty, Almighty Allah, loved us enough to give us a prophet? Do we hate ourselves that much that we don't believe that one can come from us, amongst us, looking like us to secure the ills and ways of us today? We have to do better. So today, we're going to do better. Yes, sir. So my, the last revelation that I want to share with you is out of the Holy Quran and More Science Temple of America. Because I want you to understand and see that Allah loved you more. That Allah loved you and he gave you a holy and divine prophet. And if you turn to chapter 48, instruction 1 through 3, 
We're going to read that. Each one of us going to read an instruction. Yes, Starting with Brother A, sir, you read instruction one, I'll read two, and Brother Baki will read instruction three. It's nine. All praise due to Allah. The in, chapter 48, the end of time and the fulfilling of the prophecies. The last prophet in these days is Noble Jur Ali, who was prepared divinely in due time by Allah to redeem men from their sinful ways and to warn them of the great wrath which is sure to come upon the earth. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus in, the, in those days to warn and stir up the nation and prepare them to receive the divine creed which was, which was to be taught by Jesus. Instruction, instruction three. In these modern days, there came a forerunner who was divinely prepared by the great God Allah, and his name is Marcus Garvey, who did teach and warn the nations of the earth to prepare to meet the coming prophet, who was to bring the true and divine creed of Islam. And his name is Noble Drew Ali, who was prepared and sent to this earth by Allah to teach the old time religion and the everlasting gospel to the sons of men, that every nation shall and must worship under their own vine and fig tree and return to their own and be one with their father, God, Allah. Islam. So in those instructions that we read, we hope and pray that you take them back. You use an introspection within yourself and see and have pride that Allah loves you so much that he gave you your own prophet. So today we're going to get into that. We're going to get into who is our prophet. Yes, sir. Islam, you know, sir. I got a question just coming off the top of my head, which is very simple, which I think a lot of brothers and sisters kind of already know. But what year was he born? January 8th, 1886. And Brother Baki, what happened to show us and let us know? Because a lot in the scriptures always tells us that by clear signs. Yes, sir. By clear signs, he's going to show and prove to us that his messenger and that he's here, that he's present. So what happened on that Pacific day, January the 8th, to allow us to know that our holy and divine prophet spirit was on this earth? Well, in North Carolina... In South Carolina, there was a great earthquake. Islam. And that indicated the coming of our beloved prophet. Islam. Do you have anything to add to that more? Yes, sir. Um, as, you, as you had declared that uh, whenever a true prophet is born, certain signs occur. Mm -hmm. Like with Jesus, the, the crescent moon, the star appeared in the heavens. Islam. With Prophet Muhammad, the great light shined out of Arabia. It was the same with our prophets. The brother by Keith uh, stated that, you know, uh, earthquakes shook the whole south of America. You Islam. know, and not only that, but you read the oral statements to talk about how a solar eclipse occurred. Islam. You know, and, and, and our uh, book that our Supreme Grand Sheikh had, uh, put together. It also states about how you know uh, the Sphinx over there in Egypt sucked three it's inches into the earth. So you know that's you know them the signs. Signs is for those who have understanding. So says Allah in the Holy Noble Quran of Mecca. Islam. See, that's the great thing about our Supreme Grand Sheik and his educational format. He doesn't just tell you a thing. He allows you to see it and go support it and have references to it. Yes, sir. So he wants you to show and prove. So to show and prove for anyone, you can go to the weather data information people and Google that, and they'll tell you about the Sphinx sinking three inches so on that particular day. It's a newspaper article talking about the earthquake. Islam. I was just going to go there, you know. So these things are not just made up myths of the wind. Thank you know, you. these are 100% stated facts. Islam. It was, it, was, it was either the Chicago Times or the Chicago Tribune. Islam. You know, so the Chicago Defender. Chicago Islam. Defender. So, you know, those are, those are facts. Those are not mere ideas of men. So, okay. Why don't we know uh, a lot of information about Prophet Noble Drew Ali's parents? Well, Prophet Noble Drew Ali... You know, when you go inside the oral statements, the prophet stated this in the oral statements that he would not tell anybody who his parents were 
or where they was buried because he didn't want the people to make a shrine out of his parents as they did with Prophet Jesus. You know, when, you, when you look at, you know, other uh, religious faiths, not to pin anything down, they they consider Mary to be the, the mother of God and all of this. They made a shrine out of the sister. And, you know, the prophet didn't want to go through that. You know, Islam. his focus was to reunite reunite us with our father God, Allah. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just what it was. So he didn't he didn't tell anyone who his parents were or where they was born. Islam. So we have this myth, these mythical ideas out there that Frank Turner and Lies. Yeah. And some other woman was his parents. But you can't substantiate any of that information. Because, like you said, more he told us and educated us why he didn't do that. Because our people have a bad sense of idol worshiping. Yes, sir. And our prophet didn't want us to do those such things. You know, he didn't. We, we don't idol worship him. <laughs> it's lying. You know, we don't idol worship him. He's our holy and divine prophet. Most definitely the most noblest of images of Allah it's physically it's today. So. We understand that he's our mediator. Islam. He's the way to get us to Allah. Just like Jesus said. I'm, I'm here to show you. You should not worship man. Worship Islam. Allah. Islam. Islam. I'm your brother man. I come to show you the way. Islam. Islam. Okay, so now let's get to this, this, this theory that Prophet Noble Drew Ali was a mason. <laughs> what can we speak about that? Mm. Islam. You mind? You must, let's go Islam, say. yeah. Well, Prophet Noble Drew Ali received his prophethood in the year 1924, but prior to that, in 1898, during the World Fair, Chicago, uh, War, World Fair in Chicago, Illinois, he met a brother named John G. Jones. Now, John G. Jones, at this time, he was just known as Timothy Drew. Islam. You know, uh, eight, excuse me, not to cut you off. Yes, Let, so let's ask this question, and we're going to throw an interjection in there. Is yes, there sir. a difference between Prophet Noble Drew Ali and Timothy Drew? I mean, wisdom is revealed in degrees. Islam. Yeah. Islam. So are you saying yes or no? I'm saying this timothy drew was a was born an angel unaware islam prophet noble drew ali reached the the, the full the full degree of wisdom islam. he was taught by allah islam so to in layman's terms there is a difference between timothy drew and prophet noble drew ali islam. because when we say that we're saying it from the standpoint as each of uh, one of us yes sir you know the resurrection is a fact brother. jesus islam told us about the resurrection he had to fight with himself this line so once it's, he came out of the cave he was a different individual it's a difference between prophet uh, prophet muhammad <laughs> i've been abdullah Il, and when he was born because he he wasn't born knowing the faith of islam islam <laughs> okay but go back to the to yes sorry. sir so in 1898 he met a brother named john g jones he was the head of he was let he was uh he received the title of the head of islam for those who wanted to declare that Allah was God and Muhammad was his prophet for those in Freemasonry, the uh, African Masons. And Prophet Noble Drew, I mean, Timothy Drew ended up becoming a noble in that, you know, in that Masonic order. You know, and uh, there he came into the contact of Islam. But he, the thing, thing about him is that he fell in love with the one God principle. Islam. He fell in love with the one God principle. And so when he had came into that contact, that's when he came into Islam. Islam. So let me let me let me say this so we have a good clear understanding. Yes, sir. When he became when he received the noble, do a lot of Moors even know that he stopped using the noble? <laughs> no, nah, they, they say he received it from the Queen of Elizabeth. Islam. You know, <laughs> yes, they, they come up with these mere ideas of men. Mm. Um, but he stopped using the noble Islam. because he had no longer needed it. Islam. You know, see, when he was Timothy Drew and he was walking his path, yes, sir. that was the way that our people on our side of the nation got education. Yes, sir. So it wasn't far-fetched for him yes, sir. to go through those walks of life. Yes, but sir. once he found Islam and Islamism, he knew that he could continue and break himself away and do the things that he needed to do. Islam. Islam. That was the most popular path. See, a lot of people don't understand that. Freemason, we needed that at one point. 
We needed that at one point. Prophet no the Bajar Negro. Yeah, the Negro needed that at one point. But when Allah sent us our prophet, we no longer needed that. Islam. You know, so when he had demonstrated that that was the most popular path during his lifetime. Islam. So what your uh, brother uh, Baki did, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, pronounced his prophethood. He pronounced his prophethood in 1925. Islam. Islam. December the 18th. Islam. 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 So I wanted to read some here. Yes, sir. Let's read it. What y'all was just on. This is our Holy Quran, chapter thirteen. Islam. And this refers to our prophet as and this is talking about Jesus then. And I'm going to instruction ten. It says the council of the brotherhood convened, and Jesus stood before the Herophant and answered the question. That were asked with clearness and with power. The Raphim exclaimed, Rabbani, of the Rabbinate, why come you here? Your wisdom is the wisdom of the gods. Why do you seek wisdom in the halls of men? And Jesus said, In every way of life I will walk, in every hall of learning I will sit. The heights that any man has gained, these I will gain. Islam. What any man has suffered, I will meet that I may know griefs, the disappointment and the sore temptations of my brother man, it's that nice. I may know just how to sorcerer those in need. It's so I read nice. that to say when he was Timothy Drew, he had to go through all the halls of learning. At this time, masonry was strong. Islam. You know, so he went through there to, to teach and learn, to, to teach and learn and to give our people the full the fullness of Islam, which was brought by Allah. But you got so many people that back then that was Masons, how can he explain what Islam is if he had to fight if fight back and forth with them? So he went through there and through the halls of learning and conquered the, those things that he needed to learn just to show the possibilities of man and show that he was truly a prophet of Allah. Islam. Uh -huh. So... So what we what we need to, for you to understand is he needed to utilize those things, but I'm gonna give you something to allow you to know that he cut it loose. Yes, sir. It's okay. Not. There's a conversation between him and the Grand Sheikhs of a temple. Mm. It was Temple Nine, Sister Washington, uh, Sister Whitehead Hill, or yes, right Sister Dove Hill. Right I think yeah, I think it's Whitehead Hill. And the Prophet asked the sister. Do you have anybody in your temple that can speak a foreign language? Yes, uh. At the time, she didn't. But later on, she came back to the prophet and told her, yeah, I got somebody. So she introduced him to a particular brother. And the brother had some Masonic stuff on. Hmm. And the prophet told the brother, do away with that. You don't need that anymore. Yes, All right, your prophet is here. Yes, yes, so that is allowing you to understand that he got done, he left that alone because he found something much, much greater. Islam. You know, Allah blessed him. See, so I want to go here. In the state of North Carolina, something happened to our prophet. Hmm. He went to the caves. Islam. So I'm going to throw that out there and allow any one of y'all to pick that up. Islam. Um, prophet Noble Dr. Ali will often go into the, the the wilderness, wilderness of North Carolina, you know, and um, this was in 1924, you know, and when he went up into the caves, he already found things set up. Certain books was there and everything, and it was right then and there at that moment that he met the spirit of the Almighty Allah, and while caught up in the spirit of the Almighty Allah, he received the holy name Ali, you know, so. Our Prophet Noble Drali received divine revelation from the Almighty Spirit of our Father God Allah. Islam. Islam. So he received what? Divine revelation. Okay. And divine revelation, that's the most most that's a great way to say it. Yes, sir. So at that time, what was his name? What was the prophet's name at that time? Noble Drew. Noble Drew. So when he went up there. And got blessed by Allah. Islam. He received something, right? Islam. What did he receive? Received the holy name Ali. Islam. Brother Baki, 
Can you do you can you tell us the name or the meaning of the word Ali? Mm. That's a good study question. Yes, sir. It is. That is a great study question. Matter of fact, you know what? I don't even want you to answer, Mo. Keep Islam. Ali means keeper uh -huh. of the sublime. Oh, oh, Islam. Islam. That's okay. The mo, the mo, the mo gave it to y'all. Yeah, well, since he said that, that's why we go here. You know, I'm with Drew, keeper of the subline. Islam. 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 <laughs> okay. So now that we know that he was blessed by Allah and given a holy name, the keeper of the subline, meaning that this divine plan of the ages was pressed upon his heart. Islam. And he had and will walk a particular way. And us as an adapts in this divine movement, we profess and claim to follow those same footsteps yes, and, su and suffer all that he has suffered. Okay? So let's get into another question. Another question is, when was the Moore Science Temple of America founded? Either, either mm. brother. Islam. The, that according to, and according to the questionnaire, yeah. Islam, give me the questionnaire. Okay. Islam, according to the Morse questionnaire, it was founded in 1913 AD. Islam, so we're not going to be stuck on question one, who is Allah? Yes, sir. So we're going to get into that question. It says, what What the question say again? It said, what year was the Morse Science Temple of America founded? In 1913 AD. 1913 AD. Now, for study purposes, mm -hmm. you need to go into that. You Good need line. to look into that question to get a firm understanding. Because something divinely happened with our prophet in 1913. It's, to us, it's obvious that the movement name wasn't Moore Science Temple of America. Yes, sir. In 1913. No, sir. How can we prove that? Using the Morse literature. Go to it, Mo. See, we don't want to confuse the people. We want to help the people. Yes, sir. Within the Morse literature, we have, uh, it was actually an article written by our prophet. It's called Morse Leaders, Historical Message to America. Islam. Read it, Mo. Islam. Yes, sir. On page 18 through 19, it says, We organized as the Morse Temple of Science in the year of 1925 and were legally incorporated as a civic organization under the laws of the state of Illinois, November 29, 1926. The name Morse Temple of Science was changed to the Morse Science Temple of America, May 1928, in accordance with the legal requirements of the Secretary of the States of Illinois. Islam. May, May 1st. So now... That allows you to understand something else was going on when you look at that question. What year was the Moore Science Temple of America founded? 1913. Yes, A divine revelation happened with our prophet, Moore. Yes, sir. Okay. This is the specialness, the authenticness of your prophet. It is showing you signs to understand that Allah loved you. Yes, that he gave you a guide. That he gave you something of you, by you, for you. Yes, sir. Islam. Islam. Okay? Okay. So let's go to another question. How many temples did our holy and divine prophet establish in his lifetime? Islam. That, well, he started with 19. He, say it again? 19. You say 19? Yeah. Islam. According to our beloved, uh, according to our book, I'm your prophet, written by our beloved Supreme Grand Sheik, and according to the records, not just, you know, our national leadership, but according to the records of our prophet, Prophet Nobudra Ali established over 15 branch temples. 15 temples? Uh, uh, he established 15 branch temples, 20 subordinate temples, and his membership ran well over 100,000. Islam. So he had 15 temples at that time. 15. So where all these numbers that they got today come from? 43, 65, 92. Hmm. Hmm. Are that, is that 
an indication that there may be something other than what our prophet brought. I mean, clearly. It's not. It's not. Clearly. Praise Allah for our Supreme Grand Sheikh, though. It's not. <laughs> For putting us on the right path. Islam. Showing, giving us the records. Not just showing it to us, but giving it to us. Islam. Islam. So, I don't know. So, what we want to do is, let's read, since I got, you you got it. And read all the 15 temples that our prophet established in his lifetime. Starting from where? Oh. Temple 1, Emil Hill. Grand Governor, Temple 2. Say the state too. Oh, Chicago, Illinois. Temple Temple 2, H. White Bay, Grand Sheep, Charleston. West Virginia. West Virginia. Temple 3, Brother Pryor L. Grand Sheep, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Temple 4, <laughs> Brother J. Lomax Bay, Grand Governor, Detroit, Michigan. Temple 5, Brother T. Crumby Bay, Grand Governor, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Temple 6, Brother J. Moseyill, Grand Governor, Richard, Richmond, Virginia. Temple 7, C. Child Bay, Grand Governor, Cleveland, Ohio. Temple 8, A. Brown Hill, Grand Governor, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, Temple 9, Sister, White Hill Bay, Governor. Chicago, Illinois, Temple 10, Brother Polar Bay, Grand Governor, Newark, New Jersey. Temple 11, Brother T. Thompson Hill, Governor, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Temple 12, Brother Glover Hill, Grand <laughs> Governor, <laughs> Youngston, Ohio. Temple 13, Brother G. Cook Bay, Grand Governor, Baltimore, Maryland. Temple 14, Brother Shepherd. Bay, Grand Sheik, Petersburg, Virginia. Temple number 15, Brother Robinson Bray, Grand Sheik, Lansing, Michigan. Islam. So we have a direct connection. See, this is what we're showing you, that you have a direct connection to a lot. And our Supreme Grand Sheik, direct connection comes from what, Temple Moore? Say it, Mo. Temple number 13, Baltimore, Maryland. Which was established by who? By Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Also, he sent he sent the brother St. G. Cook Bay, the first grand governor of, the right, state, of that Mo. state. That's right. That's how it started. So what we're showing you is the authentic the, the authenticness of this lineage that we have. See, because if they're not teaching you. They're not leading you right. Yes, and the great foundation of our movement is we follow our holy and divine prophet. That's yes, not. Okay, I got a question. Now, what I would ask, and I know the brother can uh, cover this, is what makes this concrete? What, by, can you by, hold it up for the, for the people to see right quick before we wrap it? What makes that what makes our what makes that book I'm Your Prophet a credible source is this. What ties our, our chief minister, our Supreme Grand Sikh, back to the Prophet? On the back of his nationality card, who signed it? Saint George Cook Bay. He was the brother that the Prophet set the black fairs on his head. It's he was Islam. the one that the Prophet trusted. Islam. 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 We are at the we at the end of the show today. This is why we need all y'all support. So we can go for an hour. We need all y'all support. Please contact us at uh, www.tv33whpr.com or you can contact us at, uh, uh, I'm going to say September. I don't know why I'm going to say September. <laughs> uh, more Science Temple of America, 1928. In 1886, yes, it was more, for that was the day. That my prophet was born. I never got a chance to meet him. All I ever heard was good things about him. Chief Minister, I'm depending on you to tell me the truth. And the chief looked up with a smile and said, 
A prophet is the chief cornerstone. The builders reject, but he still stood strong. And when he 